Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snatus, where medicine makes perfect sense, containing our physiology playlist. We're talking endocrine. In the last video, we talked about the growth hormone. Today, we'll talk about the middleman for the growth hormone. It's the insulin-like growth factor 1, IGF-1, also known as somatomedin C. Somato, because growth hormone is the somatostatin, because it grows your soma, your body. Medin because it's a mediator, it's the middleman. Who makes IGF-1? The liver. What's the function? Just like insulin, it is protein anabolic. It helps you grow. Please watch the videos in my playlist in order, especially the last video about growth hormone. So here is the weird story. When we give growth hormone to a cartilage by injection outside the body, the cartilage does not grow. However, inside your body, the same growth hormone helps your cartilage grow. What? How come it's the same growth hormone? Well, the difference is in your body, you have the middleman, but in the lab, we did not. Who is the middleman? Somatomedin C, also known as insulin-like growth factor 1. That's why IGF-1 is so important. So growth hormone in your body will tell the liver cells and the cartilage cells to make IGF-1 and IGF-1 will help us grow. Let's review what we discussed before. In your body, in the endocrine system, there's the CEO, followed by general manager. Underneath, we have three employees. The CEO is the hypothalamus, the manager is the pituitary. The three employees are thyroid gland, adrenal cortex, and gonads. Who makes my growth hormone? Answer, anterior pituitary. Acetophils or basophils? The answer is acetophils. Hypothalamus is the CEO. If the hypothalamus wants us to make more growth hormone, it will send growth hormone releasing factor to the anterior pituitary. If the hypothalamus wants less growth hormone, it will send the universal inhibitor, somatostatin, to the anterior pituitary. Once the growth hormone leaves the anterior pituitary via the somatotropes, because it's a somatotropin, because it's a polypeptide, IN, that helps your body, soma, grow, tropo, trophic, tropic, etc. Once growth hormone is out of the pituitary, it's gonna float into the blood because it's endocrine, and the blood will end up in the liver, and the liver will listen to the growth hormone and will make the middleman, IGF-1. IGF-1 will help your bone grow, your cartilage grow, and your muscle grow. Again, growth hormone comes from the somatotrophs, which are acetophils, which are chromophils in the anterior pituitary. The story goes like this. Hypothalamus releases growth hormone releasing factor or releasing hormone, which goes to the anterior pituitary and tells the anterior pituitary to secrete somatotropin or growth hormone. Growth hormone goes to the liver to secrete the middleman, somatomedin, see, or insulin-like growth factor 1. It's a factor that helps you grow and acts like insulin, hashtag anabolic. Insulin is protein anabolic, glycogen anabolic, and triglyceride anabolic. Just like insulin, IGF-1 is protein anabolic. It builds up proteins from amino acids via protein synthesis or proteogenesis. That's how you grow and mature your muscles, bones, cartilages, etc. And in the last video, we talked about that growth hormone is insulin-like in one manner and anti-insulin in two other manners. How was it pro-insulin? It was protein anabolic thanks to the middleman IGF-1 because IGF-1 will help us build up muscle, cartilage, bone, soft tissue, organs, etc. Growth hormone works via the JAK-STAT pathway, but IGF-1 works like insulin via receptor tyrosine kinase and insulin receptor substrate. IGF-1 is gonna help us with intracartilaginous ossification, which means the cartilages will become bone, thanks to IGF-1 from the cartilage cells. IGF-1 will help your bones grow linearly and laterally, increase length of the bone and thickness of the bone. This happens before the fusion of the epiphysis, but as you grow older and the epiphysis fuses, you cannot grow taller anymore, but you can grow thicker. Gigantism is here, acromegaly is here. IGF-1, tell me more about yourself. I increase amino acid uptake into the cell, such as muscle cells or bone cells, and I also boost protein synthesis 
by increasing transcription and translation after I bind to my tyrosine kinase receptor. IGF-1 is the same thing as somatomedin C chemistry. It's a polypeptide. Who makes it? Hepatocytes and chondrocytes, liver cells and cartilage cells function anabolic on proteins, which means converts amino acids into big proteins, which will help you grow muscles, cartilages, bones, both linearly and laterally. Now look at that. The half-life of insulin-like growth factor is 20 hours. Growth hormone itself is less than 20 minutes. What the what? Put differently, IGF-1 is gonna make growth hormone last longer. That was weird. What do you mean by that? I mean, growth hormone alone is not that robust when it comes to actual growth. However, once growth hormone talks the liver into making IGF-1, now look at all of that growth. Boom. Let's go to the clinic. If I have acromegaly, growth hormone will be high and therefore IGF-1 will be high. Number two, if I have a pituitary dysfunction or hypopituitarism, well, pituitary sucks, growth hormone is non-existent, IGF-1 is history. How can I confirm that? Let's try to do a stimulation test. Normally, giving arginine should stimulate your pituitary, causing increased growth hormone and therefore increased IGF-1. But if my pituitary sucks, giving me arginine will not do anything. So after the arginine stimulation test, I'll fail to raise my IGF-1, and this is a sign of hypopituitarism. Point number three, if I have achondroplasia, this is a condition of short stature that is not related to growth hormone or IGF. So growth hormone should be normal, IGF-1 should be normal in achondroplasia. The half-life of the growth hormone is less than 20 minutes, but for IGF-1, it's 20 hours. Why is that? Let me explain. Growth hormone is bound loosely to plasma proteins. That's why it can escape quickly from the plasma protein and go to your cell. It's released quickly. That's why it does not last long. However, IGF-1 can last 20 hours. How come? It is strongly bound to plasma protein, not easily released from the plasma protein. If it's going to be released, it will happen very slowly. So it will last longer. Both growth hormone and IGF-1 are water-soluble because they are in the polypeptide land. Growth hormone, just like prolactin, works via the JAK-STAT pathway, which is non-receptor tyrosine kinase. However, growth factors, including IGF-1, works via the receptor tyrosine kinase. Notice the difference between growth hormone and growth factors. They are not the same. IGF-1 works just like insulin. Let's review how insulin works. Here is insulin as a hormone and the target cell is the muscle cell or fat cell. Insulin will bind to the receptor which has intrinsic tyrosine kinase activity. A kinase is an enzyme that adds phosphate, phosphorylate, phosphorylate me here and phosphorylate me here and before you know it, I'm making the GLUT4 which is the door. I will add the door to the cell, open the door, let glucose into the muscle cell or into the fat cell. That's how insulin lowers your blood sugar because the glucose will leave the blood and go into the cell. If you want a more detailed explanation on the insulin action and the receptor tyrosine kinase, I have a specific video on this topic titled receptor tyrosine kinase. You'll find that video in my endocrinology playlist. In the last video, if you remember, we talked about hyposecretion of growth hormone, and this can lead to short stature. If the pituitary is the problem, it's called pituitary dwarfism. But it doesn't have to be the pituitary, it could be the hypothalamus fault, hypothalamic dysfunction, or it could be that we have growth hormone, we have GHRH, but we do not have the middleman, decrease IGF-1. This is the story of Levi dwarfism, also known as Levi Lorraine dwarfism. Basically, these patients cannot make IGF-1 despite having normal growth hormone and normal growth hormone releasing hormone. Also, there is Laurent dwarfism. This is a patient with normal growth hormone, normal growth hormone releasing hormone. However, the receptor of growth hormone, which is on the liver, does not listen, does not work, 
it's a receptor insensitivity and therefore the liver will not make IGF-1. So in Levi, I cannot make IGF-1. In Larone, I cannot listen to growth hormone because I have a receptor issue and therefore I also cannot make IGF-1. Similar to Levi, the pygmies of Central Africa are short. Why is that? It's a congenital anomaly. They cannot make IGF-1 just like Levi, despite normal levels of growth hormone. If you like this video, you will enjoy my endocrine pharmacology course, which will teach you more about the insulin subtypes, diabetic ketoacidosis, hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non-ketotic syndrome, and much more. Download today at medicosisperfectionalis.com. I also have a kidney physiology course on the same website, plus many other premium courses. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.